Um, so the second topic, um, second project um, is on uh, PyTorch for spiking neural networks. Um, so first of all, for, for, for those of you who don't know PyTorch, PyTorch is an library, open source uh, machine learning library that uh, provides um, yeah, typical features that you would expect from a machine, from a modern uh, machine learning uh, library. Um, I mean, there are other ones like uh, ones for, by Microsoft. Uh, there's also by Google, there's TensorFlow, for example. So there are many uh, different libraries. Uh, here we will focus on PyTorch for technical reasons um, because it's, uh, it seemed easier for us to integrate our brain scales um, hardware into PyTorch. So that's why we chose uh, PyTorch. But the high level um, features are more or less the same. So they provide auto uh, differentiation, uh, so autocrat uh, support. So if you think of uh, um, describing uh, uh, mathematical or numerical um, um, yeah, calculations, uh, you can think of uh, creating this kind of uh, tree structure on the right. So this is uh, what uh, machine learning libraries usually call a data flow graph. So you have the operations in the graph and you see um, these arrows that uh, show how data uh, flow happens. And if you, yeah, if you travel or visit the graph in, in forward direction, this is usually uh, just a stepwise a numerical uh, integration that happens overall. So you basically advance from, let's say, from, a, from one, yeah, let's say, time step to the next time step. Uh, what you can also do is you can you can use this autograd feature to uh, travel the uh, graph uh, reverse so in backwards uh, direction and then you can make use of uh, the derivative of all the uh, operations in and, and use the chain rule to basically uh, calculate the numerical uh, backwards uh, uh, um, derivative of the overall operation and this helps you for certain algorithms so for example if you uh, use backpropagation, you can use this uh, to, to optimize uh, your overall calculation. And that's why it's uh, so important for machine learning libraries to support this feature. Um, what, what is also integrated in the machine learning libraries is usually optimizers, so different kinds of um, uh, top-level algorithms that uh, optimize based on your uh, um, yeah, forward and backward paths. Um, calculations. So for example, you could do gradient descent, but you could also do stochastic gradient descent or gradient descent with uh, momentum. So these are the typical optimizers that you also have in these frameworks. And there are also others. Um, they typically, and PyTorch is no exception, they also support uh, not only CPU-based calculations, but also graphic cards, so GPUs. And, and um, they support it in a very high-level fashion, so you don't have to write low-level code for the graphic cards, but just you create basically this uh, compute um, uh, uh, graph or, or data flow graph, and you just uh, let the tool uh, create a code for your graphics card and um, execute it. And if it's reasonably, uh, if the chunks of the calculations are reasonable and the data sizes are reasonable, you usually get a very good performance out of the graphics card overall. Um, Tools like PyTorch also provide abstraction layers for, for yeah, when building multi-layer uh, networks or data flow um, graphs. Um, they also support extensions. We use that in the case of PyTorch to integrate brain scales to our neomorphic hardware as an accelerator into PyTorch. Um, PyTorch is an example for machine learning library that uh, usually does eager execution. So you basically execute as you write, as you uh, go through as you interpret the code, uh, but there's also a, um, a mode where you basically uh, use a just-in-time compiler and, uh, and the torch script feature to basically create a, a graph that is executed afterwards. Um, so in general, it's similar to other tools, especially similar to, uh, to TensorFlow. On the other hand, if you think of spiking your networks, usually you have uh, not only it's, it's not only an artificial neural network uh, that you would have in a machine learning library, for example, or in some cases in a machine learning library, but you also have the concept of time. So you have spikes, you have uh, time constants on, on your membrane, for example, neural membrane, and information transfer is not, is not based on floats or integers, but uh, usually just event-based spikes. Um, you often have uh, plasticity, um, Often it's, it's local plasticity, plasticity, biological plausible plasticity. And there are examples like 
just for models, there's leaky integrated fire neurons, current based synapses, spike timing dependent plasticity, stuff like this. So just the uh, ordinary things. And usually you have other graph uh, structures, which makes it similar. Uh, but in this case, you do not uh, have the low level numerical instructions in the graph, but you have basically the building blocks, the cells uh, in the graph. So you have populations of uh, neurons uh, that are connected inhibitor with uh, inhibitory synapses or excitatory synapses, and you have multiple layers, you have recurrency, you have external stimulus and stuff. Um, and now you could ask, what's the reason to bring this to, uh, to bring bring these uh, two things together? Yeah. So we have we have tools for for spiking neural networks, and we have tools for machine learning. Um, nowadays, people are also interested in in in, in using basically uh, both feature sets uh, in, 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 a, in a combined fashion. So for example, just from a technical standpoint, it's nice to make use of the GPU acceleration without having to, to think about low level stuff. So machine learning tools provide this. Um, data pre and post-processing is usually a strong asset of, of, uh, of these machine learning libraries. They provide usually a lot of helper functions and stuff to just do all these uh, small things, loading MNIST images from somewhere uh, creating, uh, yeah, transforming data into spike trains is, is, is very easy also in machine learning frame, framework. So data loaders are important. Visualization of, uh, of, uh, of the yeah, overall network structure or data flow structure is, is easy. Um, I already mentioned the optimizer. So if you're interested in this global optimization things, which are, is usually not biologically plausible, at least not trivially in all cases, um, you could make use of these optimizers. The autograd support um, is, is is sometimes useful. So, for example, for backpropagation through time, it's uh, it's useful. Um, the explicit representation of data flow is usually also nice um, because you could um, uh, use this to uh, create basically or to interface um, PyTorch-based inter uh, um, user interfaces to lower level um, software libraries that also are available for spiking neural networks or emulators like, like uh, neuromorphic hardware emulators. Um, yes, and, and overall you get, um, if you combine basically after training, if you combine your trained network and you run it on a, on a, on a efficient accelerator like neuromorphic hardware, you would get basically efficient uh, model uh, that runs on, on on an efficient platform yeah so th there are there are motivational points that make this uh, useful in in the project here which is a two-day project um a one-day project sorry um it, we will focus on uh, the evaluation of existing um yeah i would say libraries on top of the pytorch library so for example bindsnet nors there are many others um, we will think about uh, the representation representation of time in PyTorch because usually it's it's not explicitly uh, described. So usually you just describe individual time steps, which is the essence of of, of the uh, compute graph, anyways. But for for spiking neural networks, you somehow have to integrate time, especially this uh, non continuity of time uh, in in in, in spiking neural networks. Um, is, is, is sometimes a problem, especially in the backward path, uh, because it, it needs to be differentiable um, for your calculation um, to, to make any sense. Um, yes, I always another point, uh, spike trains usually look different from what you would uh, use in machine learning frameworks, where you usually have matrices and, and spike trains usually are event-based, so not uh, limited to a, a very uh, fixed structure like like a matrix um hybrid modeling is is also an interesting topic so sometimes it might be useful to combine machine learning um pre-processing steps that based that are based, might be based on convolutional neural networks and um, have a spiking neural networks um uh, afterwards so stuff like this might be interesting so in in this project we will yeah look at these um properties and and think about possible optimizations